Hello everybody, my name is Jerome and this video is about using the ADXL345 accelerometer sensor in SPI mode. The previous video I have done is using the sensor uh, but in uh, I2C mode. So a lot of the things are similar, um, you know, some of the libraries, uh, the only real difference is we're using the SPIDEV library, uh, but for the most part it's, it's very similar. Uh, so here we define the SPI path. This wasn't enabled automatically, so I had to go through some files to enable SPI communication on the BeagleBone. Um, I will put a link in my uh, website blog, uh, which you'll find in the description. Uh, basically, you know, listing the links I used to to get this working, along with the code. So here are some of the registers. Uh, we're using um, this is a uh, array of the accelerometer data registers so the x y and z and we can see that from the data sheet so this is the register map of um, the adxl 345 and we can see for example uh, 0x32 down to 0x37 are the data registers and here 0x32 down to 0x37 and likewise with these registers as well they're from the data sheet um, the code will be cleaned up a bit better in my github but uh, for the most part uh, I've finally managed to get it working because there are there's one small problem I had uh, which I'll speak about uh, when, when we get to it so some of these comments I'd probably remove as well so if we go on to the main so I don't have a uh, like different functions doing the read and writes similar to what I had with the I2C. As I said, I, I finally got it working. So I think I'm just too happy uh, right now to kind of optimize the code, uh, but maybe I'll do that in the future. But the code is kind of, uh, you know, straightforward. So I, you know, I can like group up certain things and just put them in a function and it'll, it should still work the same. So here we have a TX and RX buffer. So this is used to send and receive data. Uh, it is two, uh, it's two elements into this uh, buffer. And the reason for that is because uh, when we look at how to actually use the SPI, if we look at the, um, the waveform, is that and this is one of the problems I had is that I didn't realize you need to append a bit uh, sorry a bit on the end or at the start should I say so this actually changes it so before what I was doing is I was just sending the register so for example if I wanted to uh, read a register right I would just send the uh, register I want to read and then I'll try to read it likewise if I wanted to write to a register I would just send the register address I want to write to and then I'll send the value however that's wrong and I'll, I'll show that in the code uh, when we get to that part but um, I've got a structure to um, do the SPI transfer uh, I've got some variables set in the mode to SPI uh, mode 3 which is what the sensor is in uh, we'll use an 8 bits and the, we set the speed as well uh, this is very similar to the IS2C, so we open the path, uh, we set the SPI mode, um, and then here I, I read uh, to, to basically confirm that the mode is set. Then I set the uh, write bits, and then I also read. So every time I'm, I'm setting uh, a certain parameter in the, uh, in the uh, structure, um, so in this structure, every time I'm setting uh, a certain parameter, I always just read it to make sure it, it, it's set. Uh, I also set the speed and I check it as well. Uh, so if there is a problem, it will say we can't get the max speed, uh, what I just set. So then I just print off some, uh, basic information. Some of these stuff aren't needed. Uh, it's because I was just debugging the code. Uh, quite frequently, so I just had a whole bunch of print s and things like that. So if and when I clean this up, uh, it should look a bit nicer. Um, so here is the point where we uh, start writing to the registers. 
So the first register I write to is this register, register called reg um, bw rate. So we can go into the data sheet and we can uh, find out. We find out. There we go. So this register bw rate, data rate, and power mode uh, control. And we also use the power CTL register, our power saving feature. So some of these registers you need to configure to take out standby mode and set up the rates and things like that. So here is where, for example, I was talking about writing. Um, I need to append basically a zero on the end of this register if I want to write. And we can see that by going into the data sheet, looking at this uh, waveform is that when you're writing this, you need to append a zero uh, onto it. This is for multi bytes, which we're not using. So we basically need to append a zero and then we send the register, uh, the, the address. And that's one of the problems I had is that I didn't, you know, take into the, taken this, you know, into account. Um, so we uh, send the, um, the uh, we first send the address dependent on zero onto the start um, and then we write the value uh, I need and then we basically transfer it and we set up these parameters and then we send the uh, message and if there's a if there is a problem we can uh, you know it will print out on the terminal uh, and then we write to the next register which is the data format register I mean the same thing again, and this is the data we're using, and it's the exact same data uh, we're sending to the or, or configuring the sensor as the S uh, as the uh, I2C sensor uh, we were using, so the ADXL three four five I2C mode, uh, I2C mode. It's the same um, configurations we're doing, and the last register we write to is the power CTL register. And then we need to read the registers. So, in fact, we don't actually have to, to read this part. This was just to check that the values set are the ones uh, I set. So, for example, if I configured this register to be 0, uh, 8, or if I configured this register to be uh, 0, A, I read those registers just to make sure these parameters are set. Because, as I said before, is that I didn't take into account the writing and the reading bit I need to uh add to the start so when you're reading from the uh, sensor you need to append uh, I say append but you know it's not the end but you need to add a one to the start of the address you need to send so if we go to um, the data sheet one more time we can see that here this is the uh, SPI four wire read this is the, uh, so basically it's saying that you need to add a one here. And if you read above, it will also mention this as well. So you need to add a one. Uh, we're not using multi bytes. Um, and then you put the address you want, which is why we get, um, we, we do this. So we, or um, 0x80 with the register. So you read the register, if there's an error, we'll print the error, otherwise it will print what the value in the register is. And this is, this is the same for the three registers uh, we set. So let's look at that. And then I this is very similar to um, the I2C now. Uh, we just got three variables and a buffer. And then I put this in an infinite while loop. And I there's six... Uh, data registers to read from so there's an x high and low uh, a y high and low and a z high and low and um, you can see that again from going to the register map down here so x y and z so we read from the register and we use uh, an array to basically index into this uh, we set this to 1 as I explained before and we just read the register if there's an error we'll print it out otherwise we use the buffer and we will save the, the value of the buffer into this uh, 
character array called um, accelerometer buffer and then after that um, we basically shift the bits because there's eight bits each so we shift the bits and then um, add the other eight bits to the end of it and then we finally get the accelerometer x y and z and then we print it off and just wait for a little bit of time one thing i'll point out um, is just that going back to this data sheet one more time is that if we look at the um, kind of breakdown the waves uh, waveform of this you can see that after you send so this is for the um, it's better actually to explain on the read uh, after you if you want to read so first you would set the address you want to read from and then you would read the data but this is why um, this is why the transmit and receive uh, buffers are two uh, there's two uh, basically uh, parts to it um, because you can see that here after we if we want to read the first one that we're going to get pretty much nothing or maybe some random values so what we need to do is read the, the next set you see data 7 down to 0 comes after so if we read straight away we will get this junk which is why we then read the second uh, uh, register, uh, se second element into the array that that will hold the the value. So we we don't read from the first one, which is why uh, this is uh, a two element array. So that's pretty much that. Um, we can clean this up. So clean project, uh, which is no errors or no warnings, and then we can press build and no errors and no warnings so i've already connected the beagle bone black up so we can either uh take the object file like i've seen before uh, or the binary should i say or we can just take the um, c program if we choose the right one um, we can take the c program so i'll just do that one more time we'll clean and we will build and then if i go into the remote systems I, will, I can bring the C file in there, which I don't necessarily need to do. Um, I don't need to do that. So if I just close this. But this is uh, an alternative way of uh, programming the Beagle Bone. So here we've uh, dragged the file. So if I go into the terminal, which is already set up, we can see that we have the ADXL 345SPI.C. Uh, and because we got the C file, we need to um, use GCC and then the name of the file. You want to make an object, uh, or output, should I say? Um, and then we just give it a name. So. We can just give it the same name without the dot c so now this will build and now if we list we can see here that we have the adxl 345 spi so if i run this file now we're getting values printed off and if i move around the sensor which i've already connected we can see that the x the Y and the Z values are um, changing. And one thing I will point out is that we had a whole bunch of print statements at the, the start, and this is what it was doing. So right into the registers, uh, reading the register and reading the value we set. So this was the, uh, if we go up here, 0x0a, we read the value 10, and then we set 8 for the other two registers so that's why i checked that you know the registers i set were uh, actually set and we print off some other stuff so a lot of these things we don't really need so i can you know uncomment them out but that's pretty much it for the video uh, you can check out the blog post where i put all of the links uh, i use to uh, get this working and that's pretty much it